So did you know that there's different types of hunger? And that's what I want to uh, go over with you today to understand that there are different types of hunger and those different types of hunger are telling us something about what we're feeling. And based on the types of hunger, we should have different actions. So I think it's a really neat topic that isn't often discussed to identify that message that our body is telling us about what it's craving at this moment. And they've broken it down into three types of hunger. So something called stomach hunger, mouth hunger, and heart hunger. So often the time when we think about hunger, we think about stomach hunger. That's like that growling of the stomach, uh, you know, that really urgent need to eat whatever is in your fridge. That is stomach hunger, saying that you need nourishment, you need energy, you need you know, some kind of fuel for your body. Mouth hunger is often categorized as you need something like a specific texture or specific taste, like something sweet or salty or you're, you know, crunchy or soft. That's mouth hunger and related usually to specific cravings. And then there's something called heart hunger, and that's more, it's linked more to emotions. So you're feeling a certain way and you eat according to those emotions. And I think we'll really, you know, get into that heart hunger because uh, today, because that is that emotional eating and eating, uh, you know, for other reasons other than fueling our body or nourishing our body, it's eating to help with emotions and emotions are okay right? We're going to have emotions, but instead of eating to help kind of manage these emotions, we should be looking elsewhere to help manage these emotions. So in order to do that, we first have to identify what type of hunger it is and then, you know, have that response that will help that type of hunger. So for stomach hunger, you know, it's asking for energy. So we need to be able to nourish our body properly to provide our body with probably all three macronutrients, carbohydrate, protein, and fat to help nourish our, our body, provide it with some sugar, some energy and fuel. Mouth hunger is that craving. So, you know, your body has cravings and that's okay. So it's trying to understand what type of craving it is. You know, a lot of individuals often say it's chocolate and that's, that's fine. But what I would do is I would actually break off a piece of the chocolate bar, put it on a plate, bring it to a table, sit down and really enjoy that food. You know, it's not necessarily providing us with vitamins, minerals, nutrients, but it is providing our body with something, right? It's, it's asking for this kind of I don't know, we, I, we usually call them treats in a way in our society. So often the time we need to provide our body with that, that treat it's asking for. So if we're craving something very salty and we go and have that piece of chocolate bar, our body isn't going to be satisfied with that. And we'll probably still have that craving uh, for you. And it'll keep coming up until you satisfy it with that specific thing it's asking for. So trying to be mindful and understand what your body's asking for. And then deliver can be extremely helpful because once you deliver in an environment, like I mentioned, like uh, with a little piece of chocolate on a plate and you're calm and you're not distracted and you're really focused on, on what you're eating, you can pay attention to how that food you know, melts in your mouth or the flavors that are coming out. Usually your body only needs one or two bites of that specific food to kind of satisfy that craving and that's all you need. But if you have that chocolate craving and you pick up a chocolate bar on your way out of the grocery store and you eat it in your car, you probably need a lot more of that for your body to really be satisfied. And then that heart hunger is what I want to get into a little bit more. So heart hunger is usually a result of some kind of a trigger and triggers can be identified as three different kind of categories, emotional, mental, and physical. So emotional is really those emotions, the feelings, the memories, and some of them that come up often the time are anger, lack of control, boredom, loneliness, stress, being tired, lack of energy, underappreciated. Uh, so understanding what that emotion is can be really helpful to find a way to solve that emotion, to make sure, you know, um, 
to, yeah, to identify that the emotion is there, to understand what it is, why it's happening, and how to kind of have some kind of a solution that can help make that emotion go away or maybe not come up more or can come up again. If we eat when we have heart hunger and we have these emotions, so say that I'm feeling tired and I just eat to try to mask that emotion to kind of push it away, then it's going to come back up because it's not being resolved, right? So sure, eating does kind of push those emotions away temporarily, but they will come back up again. Uh, So just like that mouth hunger where we satisfy with that specific thing your body's asking for, we really need to slow down and understand what emotions coming up for us, why it's coming up, you know, what happened for it to come up, how can we resolve that? You know, is it talking with someone? Is it asking for help? Is it getting more sleep, right? Those are the things that will help that emotion go away if that's what we want. And remember, emotions are okay. Right. Emotions are always going to be there. It's just a matter of understanding what they are, what they're asking for and kind of delivering it. Right. It's your body's way of saying, you know, I'm tired. I need sleep. I don't need more food. So find time for sleep. Uh, Another kind of trigger could be mental. So your thoughts, your worries, uh, anxiety. So some of these thoughts can you know, be again, masked by food. So we eat food and it kind of masks those mental triggers or mental, uh, you know, thoughts that are happening and uh, it can temporarily resolve that. But again, it's temporary. So trying to slow down, understand why you're anxious and then treating that, like, why are you anxious? Are you not prepared for a presentation? Maybe taking more time to prepare will be better than eating something really quick and uh, something that may not be helping you in the long run. And then physical as well. So it could be that low blood sugar that your body is saying, I need food now. So you open the fridge and you just eat whatever is in there. It could be a smell. You know, I walk by that cinnamon bun (laughs) kind of kiosk in the mall often, and I just love that smell. And I am triggered to have a a cinnamon bun at that time. It could be a site of, you know, those McDonald's arches. I know a lot of people say, you know, I see those and I want that. And, you know, that's why they put the arches up because it is something that uh, does bring people into their store. So trying to understand these physical triggers and then, you know, instead of driving by those arches every day after work, maybe taking a little roundabout way so that you don't see those arches so you don't get triggered by that. Uh, Maybe it's having a snack so that you don't have that low blood sugar, or maybe it's not going that way in the mall, so I don't smell those cinnabons, right? So some ways to manage those types of triggers. But the one that we really need to focus on is the, let me go back here, the emotional triggers and the mental triggers. Those physical triggers are things that we can usually steer away from, uh, but those emotional triggers and sometimes the mental, so the anxiety perhaps, um, can be kind of satisfied by nurturing ourselves. And as women, we don't prioritize self-care for ourselves, right? We take care of others. That's just what we do. And I always think about when we're on a plane, there, you know, the flight attendants are always telling us that we need to put our oxygen mask on first, and then we put it on, you know, our child or our mother. And we don't necessarily practice that in real life. And that's why we have to be reminded of that when we're on the plane. And so right now I'm trying to tell you to prioritize yourself because in order to kind of deal with these emotions that come up, we really need to take care of ourselves and spend time to nurture ourselves. Because if we can nurture ourselves, provide comfort and reward ourselves in ways without food, It can help to resolve these emotions and these triggers that are coming up for us that are being resolved with, you know, emotional eating. So instead of having that emotional eating piece, we can really solve it by having some more self-care. And remember, non-judgment here, it's extremely common to use food to soothe. We we grew up being comforted with food from the time we were infants, right? Oh, they're crying. They need a bottle. Uh, I know growing up, I always got treats for, you know, good grades or after soccer practice or scored a goal, I'd go get ice cream, you know? There is a very strong relationship between food and reward or food and emotions. And, you know, it's 
taken a long time for us to have this relationship, to build this relationship. So it's also going to take a while for us to break this relationship. But the first part of breaking any cycle is awareness. So slowing down, understanding what are these triggers are for you. And then again, putting something else in place. So where's that self-care? Where's that nourishment? Or nurturing, sorry, not nourishment, nurturing. Uh, food is readily available and it's easy and it's quick and it's a way that does comfort us, right? We emotionally eat because it does temporarily blunt those emotions that we're experiencing. So it's a you know very fast way to get rid of those emotions. It's temporary and those emotions do come back. So in order for us to kind of deal with these emotions long term, we do want to put some more uh, strategies in place and that's that regular self-care. And it is common to use food to soothe because we are in a stressful lifestyle and the way that we have a break and we deserve a treat for all the hard work we've done or the pick me up um, in the afternoon is usually through some type of food that isn't used to nourish our body, but it's used to increase energy, right? We need some kind of a chocolate in the afternoon because it's going to increase our energy and we deserve this because we work really hard all day. So thinking about all of these relationships we have that we've established um, can be helpful to break them, right? Because we, but we need to kind of slow down, become aware of what we've been telling ourselves and what we've been using food for. So let's break this cycle. And how do we do that? Well, we have to reduce the stress in our life that could be triggering our need for nurturing. So what is that stress? Trying to identify that stress and reducing it yes that would be awesome or we can replace the form of you know eating to reduce that emotion that we're feeling with something else that's pleasurable a different type of activity one that can provide us with comfort or reward or of re-energizing us in some way right so thinking about ways that work for you uh, instead of using that quick form of food to to blunt that response how else can we can we have these pleasurable activities and unfortunately it's different for everyone so we have to kind of experiment to see what works for us you know is it that afternoon walk instead of the chocolate to help us increase our energy in the afternoon um you know after a hard day at work what's our reward maybe it's going to have a massage right instead of um, going out for ice cream so thinking what you like to do, and this is where your homework is going to come in. So you have to think of ways that you like to nourish yourself, right? And nurture yourself. So make a list of what you find special that doesn't involve food. You want to be sure to have some ideas that require little time. So instead of, you know, that one hour long massage, what's something you could do in five minutes? And then you can also have longer things like a massage, of course, but you want to have different activities so that depends on, you know, that situation that you're in. You know, if you want something quick and you need something quick or something that doesn't have a, require a lot of money or something that does require a lot of money, right? Lots of different options so that you have options to draw on when this is happening to you at the moment. Uh, you can also require have some ideas that require others as well, like inviting some um, other people because that heart hunger can really be soothed by, you know, even picking up a phone and calling a friend. Uh, or it could just be yourself and it's reading a book in a comfy, uh, even five minutes of reading a book in a comfy a blanket with a warm cup of tea, perhaps. And then identify times, regular times that you can incorporate into your, your weekly routine where you can provide yourself with comfort and re-energize yourself and reward yourself on a regular basis can help to reduce these emotions from, from coming up. And that's, you know, kind of filling your cup that we often don't do because we don't have time for, you know, regular self-care, but it is important and it needs to be part of your routine. So we want to try to practice nurturing ourselves without food, and this can help you know, if you have that list. So really just go ahead and ex like explore anything that you enjoy um, and then be prepared. So is there something that you can keep in your car that you can access? Maybe it's a, a, a list of different music that you like and a playlist that you could play while you're in the car. Um, 
some materials that you need in your office um, or at home to fulfill these kind of activities that will provide you with this nurturing, um, yeah, this ability to nurture yourself. Again, it's important to schedule this in. It's not when you have time, but it's weekly or daily, right? So what does that look like for you? Is it five minutes every day? Is it one hour a week? You know, what does that look like for you? It's going to be different for everyone and there's no right answer, but it's based on what you feel. And then, yes, consider how you're going to reward yourself without food because you deserve to be rewarded and you need to be rewarded. So think about how you can do that. And that's your homework. So I have a a couple of things here that I like to do, uh, read, even watching TV. I don't let myself watch TV because I don't have time, but sometimes I put that on my, my list, you know, have a, watch a movie and have that ability to not do any other work or be with anyone or take care of other people, just kind of zone out. That's okay. Get outside, go for that morning walk, uh, you know, see the sun in the morning, maybe even have lunch outside, word puzzles, coloring, music, you know, it's endless. Uh, you can even Google this, like what are some self-care ideas and make a list for you. I encourage you to at least make 10. Remember, try to have a variety of ones that don't take a lot of time, ones that do, ones that require money, ones that don't, ones that require yourself, or one that requires others. The more you have to draw on, the better, but at least 10. And then schedule it into your routine this week. 